Growing up, I was the only child in a family of artists. My parents were always busy with their creative work, leaving me with plenty of time to play the rogue. I was a little red-headed ball of energy. And from a young age, I loved to joke and prank my parents and their friends, whether it was acting like a zombie or playing dead on the floor. By the time I was six years old, I was already pulling the fire alarm for fun, cutting my parents' hair in their sleep, and secretly turning up the thermostat. Although I could be a handful, I was able to get out of trouble with my charming smile and big, pleading eyes. Surprisingly, I didn't have any issues at school either. Many of my classmates found me hilarious, and I had a talent for creating a fun atmosphere wherever I went. Of course, not everyone appreciated my sense of humor, especially the teachers, who were often the target of my pranks. But I never went too far, and they always forgave me in the end. Things were going great for me until we went to high school. Suddenly, my jokes started to seem childish and annoying to my classmates, and I became bored and stopped playing pranks. Around that time, a new student named David showed up at our school. He was a football star whose parents had just moved into our neighborhood. With trainers watching over him, clubs hunting for him, and a personal fan club of cheerleaders, David was the quintessential jock with a perfect reputation. I couldn't resist the opportunity to pull a trick on him. I started with some classic gags like shock pens, sticky notes, and even a snake in a can. But David didn't even seem to notice. Then I got more creative and put baby powder in his helmet. But it turned out that his fan club wanted to try it on, and one of the cheerleaders ended up getting covered in powder. Of course, it was funny, but I wanted to get him. So I decided to break out the heavy artillery. I set up slime buckets above the door of the locker room, and when the football team walked in, they all got covered in slime, except freaking David, who was the last to enter. But to my surprise, he started laughing so hard that I couldn't help joining in, along with the whole team. As expected, my prank got me suspended for a few days, and the principal made me clean up the mess I'd made before leaving. Hey, I see you can use a hand. Why are you helping me clean up the slime? Because I'm a decent human being, or maybe I just wanted to talk to you. What about? Why, you don't stop trying to prank me? Did I do something to upset you? Or are you secretly in love with me and just trying to get my attention? Please, as if you're capable of upsetting me. And ew, in your dreams, you just seemed too good to be true. So I felt like getting to you with a prank. You know, like trying to find out what your kryptonite is. Wow, did you just call me Superman? And my kryptonite is pizza. Really? Ugh, so boring. And beautiful red-headed girls who deny thinking about me. Are there cameras here somewhere? Nope, but I wish there were, so I could relive how you blushed at my words over and over again. Uh, I'm getting a call. I gotta take this. I didn't hear anything. It's on silent mode. Yes? Hello? Oh my god. My cat needs CPR? Hold on, Whiskers. I'll be right there. I ran off before things could get more awkward.